a oh shit moment for me It was me pretty too, simple. Because so, I like, yeah. holy shit, he's got a house, a mortgage to pay for, and like, I got to support you. Right. You yeah. know? And yeah, it, I'm sure that was intimidating. Yeah. He's going to hold me accountable to make sure that I'm doing the right things and pushing us in the right ways. All right. Welcome to another Mac podcast. This one is super special to me because I've built Mac construction since I was 21 years old. There's been a guy that's been with me for a long time that I'm going to introduce. He has built with me be right behind the scenes of building this company as we grow and adapt and change. So it's like it's kind of like the man behind the, the curtain here a little bit, but he he does a lot of the legwork for me. He's a lot of what he's done is is because of the growth that's happened in my companies. So um, I want to introduce Mike Newstead, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? The legend. Yeah. The legend. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big lead up. I'm not sure I'm able to uh, uh, fulfill that lead up, but yeah. I'll do my best here. So. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike. And uh, yeah. yeah, this is a, uh, uh, this is a big one for me because you've, um, you, you've been right behind me on, on supporting my crazy adventures and anything I'm willing to uh, throw at you. You, you seem to stick on that. It's a fun ride. You know, it is, it pushes me and it, uh, uh, I don't know. I enjoy it. Yeah. Best job I've ever had. Right. So. Oh, geez. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Mike, this is, you know, what Mike does was not like what was comfortable to him. I don't think, you know, I, no. I, I throw Mike probably out of his comfort zone Absolutely. more often. Yeah. Um, I told him today there's going to be three cameras on him and a bunch of light, you know, it's just stuff that, um, I've probably it's introduced to day. him. Yeah. It's not every day, but it's good. Yeah. 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 Well, we, we appreciate it, Mike. And, uh, so Working behind me a little bit on these companies, let's say Mac. When you first got introduced to Mac, and uh, we're gonna, I think we'll talk a little bit about the story and then yeah. how working with me. So it's like when you you came from a larger corporation in retail, and yep, um, I I remember our truck ride <laughs> over from. I don't know if we talked in the parking lot or at some point. I think it was actually uh, in the driveway of my house i think we were sitting in your yeah. your, your your pickup and trying yeah. to figure something out so it was uh yeah it was a oh was, shit moment for it was me pretty too, simple because so, i like yeah. holy shit he's got a house a mortgage to pay for and like <laughs> like he's he's gonna hold me accountable to make sure that i'm doing the right things and pushing us in the right way so it was like the first like big moment for me other than that it was like college students and like construction labor it didn't you know what i mean it wasn't like the first I got to support you. Right. You yeah. know? And yeah, it, I'm sure that was intimidating. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it is. It, 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 it's probably the limiting factor of like what introduced me to the next level of construction. So, yeah. um, you know, I took that leap of faith and told you I could pay you and it wasn't even much. Um, and, uh, but I was nervous about it because I, I just wanted, I didn't want to let you down, right? Like that was my yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't, for me, it was just a moment of, uh, I was ready for a change, it's hard to make change yeah. at that point. But yep. it was like, let's do this. You yeah, know, I was excited. Your energy um, excited me. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and so you know, we really introduced uh, Mark to Mike and and Mike to Mark, and we we went all in. I what did you start as? What were you doing right away in Mac Construction? Um, this isn't even clear to me. I don't yeah, think exactly. I, What's I, your story on I, that? I, I, it was. Uh, they started off working with the patio crew. Um, stamp patios. Stamp patios. Didn't next know, thing. Next didn't level. Didn't know anything about stamp patios whatsoever, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but we had uh, some couple guys that were, you know, had been with you. So yeah. they, they knew the process. So for me, it was just managing, you know, and uh, so working So you know hard. anything about concrete? No. So no. had you managing concrete people? Yeah. No concrete experience. So, yeah. yeah so is that... You didn't call me crazy. No, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I was open to, you know, I've done a few things, right? I haven't really <laughs> maybe been an expert, um, but I knew I could manage people. Okay. And I knew I could plan yep. and uh, um, just rely on the people around you to know what they're doing and talk to c customers. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I it, it worked out just fine, and I, I got to work too. I was in the field a lot, which I liked that. Yeah, um, you know, I was the sell it, 
have the guys come in and I'd come in and seal and backfill. You know, that was my <laughs> that was my gig and they were on to the next one. You so. get them what forming up on the next patio yep. and going on. Yep. Yeah. And we had a rhythm going and it uh I don't know. It worked out. It's yeah. it's fun to think about how that started. So. so you didn't necessarily have to have the skill. You were just managing the people, the right people. Yeah. And managing yeah. them. Yeah. You rely on the the people to that are doing it to you know know what they're doing and and, yeah. and let them do that. Um, sometimes you got to sort out whether or not they do know what they're doing. <laughs> um, you know, so we've had to run through that a few times too. But you know, once you you get that person. Let them do that, and right. you just try to clear the obstacles for them. So right, yeah, I feel like that's your superpower. You don't, you didn't really know, like, you didn't know concrete, but you trusted the people. Well, you, you kind of read the bullshit, read between the lines. Like, yeah, wait a minute. I mean, I don't know anything about concrete, but are, you know, yeah, this are we doing look, this correctly? This doesn't look right to me. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. It's, so it's, uh, yeah, so there, there was some of that as yeah. well too, you know, and. uh yeah, I don't know. We figured it out. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. So yeah. we were, I don't know, fifty patio. I don't remember what we did in the summer. It was like one after the next. It was yeah, like we tried to line them up, you know, <laughs> just you know, hope we were making money and and turning them as quick as we could. So, yeah. 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 Hoping to make money at the beginning is not the best fashion, but we. Yeah. It's sometimes what you had to do. Put your head down. Um, job cost along. I think what do we do? Track hours and. Yeah, it was mainly hours, and uh, you know, hope your bid is right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And and then. Try to uh, um, maybe beat that a little bit if you right. can. Right. So, well, I think in that in that point, like we were, we just got back from a conference, and we can kind of talk about that a little more. Um, you know, concrete's not six dollars a square foot because it was five dollars last year, right. right? Like that was the mentality as a small yeah. contractor. If you're a small contractor listening to this, um, some of the things that Mike learned, it was like we had simple like job cost sheets. I remember we'd print them out. Yes. Yeah, you give them to the guys. It's yeah. We try to give them price right there, you know, and okay. it, then we could usually sell it. To the too. customer? Yeah. yeah. So if it was this size, it's 12 bucks a square foot. If you get any, you know, or, you know, whatever range, I think from 20 bucks a square foot down to 12, you know, it was in Depending that range. Depending on the size of the patio. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So we could get to square footage, give them a price right there. And a lot of times it was, if you could do it that quick, you know, you get them to, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So. And I, I, and then, uh, yeah, that would sell it to the customer, build a little job sheet for the foreman. It's 20 sticks of rebar and six yeah. yards of concrete. And it's like, why'd you use six and a quarter? Right. It's like, you know, grade was a little off and, right. and, uh, yeah. it was very simple, but I think we did do a good job of making sure we made some money and knew when we weren't and yeah. to adjust pricing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, not nearly the volume we're doing now, but it was, right. I don't know, it was a good learning experience, I think, for me. Just the the whole, from the selling to the, like I said, backfilling and, and yep. moving on to the next one. So it was it was good. Well, you learned right from the field because I think I think there's ways you don't just skip it and go to the top, right? Like you learned the process, and no different than I. I was pouring concrete, and then I was the right. super foreman, the man, the superintendent, the, the project manager. I just kind of kept moving up. Yeah. And, and figuring out the role, making the mistakes in the role. Um, and it's kind of like just how you did it and how I think we're successful today um, because it, I believe you moved up into PMing or, or something. You were yeah. kind of a superintendent slash sales slash yeah. department I, head. From there, you know, some of the house builds started. So oh, yeah, that's right. I switched over from, from that to uh, um, helping with the, the house builds. So, I mean, that was a pretty big change too. I didn't know right. a lot of the, right. I had some carpentry experience, but I didn't know the, the process on that. Right. But, so um, you go from a $10,000 patio to a two, three, four hundred thousand dollars house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, making the big bucks now. Yeah. We, we thought. Well, you thought, but it was <laughs> more money, but not necessarily the bucks. Yeah. Know, yeah. The so, yeah. The, yeah. the buck stops here more or yeah. less. <laughs> yeah. A lot of hard work. I mean, a lot of late nights you know yeah so yeah. yeah i think when we when we moved into the housing thing it's like that was the dream i thought like okay we build 10 four hundred thousand you know we're gonna do four million bucks this year right i didn't know you were gonna be married to the homeowner for like nine or six to nine months yeah. of just like it's literally you're like sitting at the dinner table with them yeah in an argument about yeah and, and it's a lot backslash. of it's a lot of stress it's a lot of stress for homeowners as well too, yeah you know 
the 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 framing goes fast and then all of a sudden you got to finish it and you're picking out faucets and you know yep. it, it's stressful for you know for the homeowners and for the for the contractor yeah for the contractor too it is it's uh it's it's tense yeah so. we had some humbling um you know you yeah. just learn a lot you just do you do yeah. yeah you learn how to compromise you learn how uh to you know make things work and uh um again it's, it's just a it's a it was a really good learning experience for me yeah so. so let's let's uh let's talk about the conference and we'll get to like where we're at today in mac and like what your yeah. what your role looks like and how you've helped build this all the way up into what it is now um doing over 25 million in revenue so it's um we were just at a conference with george yeah george headley so um just so you know who george headley is he's a he was a mentor of mine right out of the gate um, he's the guy that, you know, if the pickup's paid for, it still costs you money. If the uh, tracking job costing, tracking job hours, and really identifying just running a company instead of you running the company, he kind of kind of tells you how to delegate tasks and build processes and kind of keep elevating yourself through all the roles into, you know, building yourself into a business owner, which should be ran by itself versus just in the weeds of the business and never growing because there's a, there's levels we've hit where it's barriers and and you gotta, you gotta delegate and elevate a little bit and get out of your own way and your own head almost. So absolutely. Um, that's where George, I learned a lot from George, you know, he's 70 mid seventies now. I mean, he's, he's up there, but he, he gets us around the right people to keep growing us. And yeah, yeah. What, what was your take from, um, we were round table, George, last week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, what's your... I, I like just George himself. I, I like him a lot because he's very practical. Um, he doesn't uh, try to fill you with a lot of fluff and, you know, it's, you know, he'll call you out, you know, you know, that's stupid. Why are you doing that? You know, don't do that, right? Yeah. And, and to remind you to manage rather than do you know it's a that group i think is a a group of doers yeah and it, it's hard to step back away from that sometimes trying um, to get to managers and, and you and you just in interacting with a lot of those companies that have been doing this for many years too they still have the same problem yep. like the the owner wants to get out in the field and show the guys how to do it right and uh you know reminding to manage and trust your people and train them and and, and to work with them so yeah, because I, I I seen some struggles. It was like, well, the owner wants me out there because he's a good customer of ours and he always has had me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think I identified that and I was like, well, you know, Mike's gonna take care of you now. And I, you know, I started dropping projects down to you. And it was like, um, you know, I just took George's word. It's like that's what we had to do. And 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 in most cases, you did a better job than I did. And and you know, people just they trust you and know you and like you, and that's why they want to keep working with you. Which I'm humbled. This, you know, that's. That's great, but to grow, you have to be able to let your team thrive. Yeah, and, and they may have a different way of, of looking at it or even doing it, then, and, and sometimes that's hard to just let that happen too. Yeah. But, uh, um, again, I made my mistakes um, along the way. You know, I'm sure yeah. there were some times where you were frustrated with me, um, but, you know, I found my way through them. Yep. You know, I get guidance, and having to trust the people that, you know, that I work with to, to be able to do that as well, to give them that room to grow and learn. Right. So. Yeah. You got to almost let them fail to, once they fail a couple of times, they're not going to enjoy it either. No. Right. Like, yeah. and if they're in the right seat, they want to grow beyond that. And, and so they, they pivot quickly. They, they yeah. may, you know, they, they grow themselves. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta let them fail almost. And, and it's, unfortunately it, it, it's hard to watch, you know, it's like yeah. kids, like, you know, <laughs> right. you, you want the best for your kids, but you, you know, in the long run, that yeah. if they have some, they fall down and bump their knee up a little bit yep. and they can get back up from that and learn from it, you know, they'll be better off, you know? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, and George is just a, such a good guy that like these construction companies will get stuck at four or five, six million. We weren't, not a lot of guys in our group were stuck in that range, but, um, you got to get on your own, got out of your own path and hire people that are better than you yeah. and, and hire for your weaknesses. Is what I always say. It's like, yeah, I, I, I think just being able to identify that and, you know, it's okay to know that, Hey, this guy knows a lot more about this than I do. 
And even though I'm, you know, I might be considered his supervisor, it's okay to let him, you know, let him have that knowledge and, you know, not be afraid of that. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's yeah. uh yeah. George is good for that. I like, I adapt to George cause he went into development and then he's built himself a real estate portfolio. And then yeah. I don't even know if he owns a construction company anymore. It seems like it, but maybe I, he seems like he's got his hands in a lot of different things. I, I think yeah. he just likes the, you know, the, it, you know, it's staying the, the, in it. Yeah. Staying in it. The, the, the rush and the stress even sometimes. That yeah. Is, so yeah, yeah, he likes that. And so if you're a new construction company or if you're doing 20 million, like I would, I'd completely tell you to read like some of George's books and read some of his material. We still reflect on it. Yeah. Um, um, sometimes we get more sophisticated and make things more complicated than we need to. Yeah. And it's just like a reminder, like keep things simple. Don't over sophisticate things that we're trying to do. Yeah, just absolutely. Work packed to simple. And, and George has been a huge mentor of mine in the construction world. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was good. It was a great conference. Or you know, I don't even know. It's, good. it's more of a roundtable with other contractors. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's. I think it's super helpful. He's super fair as a coach. Like you can't. Oh. Yeah. You, you can get on the phone with the guy. I mean, he's fifty years of experience. <laughs> like you yeah. can't beat it. Yeah. It's it's uh, when you get in some tough spots. Sometimes it's good to draw upon that experience of, you know, just. You, you, maybe you already know what to do in a situation, but it's good to have somebody in the background just re, reaffirming that. It's like, yeah. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Right. So, yeah. 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 Anything from bidding to completing to follow up with the customer to marketing he talks a little bit about. It's yeah. like he just knows how to run construction companies, how to be successful and what it takes. Um, um, get, again, he's a little older demographic. I bring a little newer demographic. Mm-hmm. I have a little different you know, a little different kick on it, but that's just the way I do things. That's the way he does things, but you can learn. Um, yeah, absolutely. And learn from him. So, so yeah, that was a great, it was a great deal. I think we, we learned a lot and, uh, and we always do. We do it every biannually. Yep. Go and learn some more. Yep. Just make those contacts too from people around the country. It's, you know, people are dealing with the same stuff. So it, it is. It yeah. Is. Yeah. So. And I love the transparency of like everyone's financials are laying on the table. Yeah. So it's like 20 companies getting together all in the same niche doing 20 to 50 million and yeah. we lay our financials down on a piece of paper and everyone's viewing them and you talk about your problems in your right. company you talk about your wins yep um and it's it's kind of it's kind of weird well it, it helps you hold you accountable as well too yeah, because proof is in the numbers yeah <laughs> if if you agree to do something and then you come back to the next conference and you're you didn't do it and your numbers reflect that it's you know you're held accountable you yeah know, so yeah, so if you're gonna you're gonna join a group like that, be ready that you need yeah. to have your numbers straight. Um, and uh, if you don't have your numbers straight, they're gonna get them down on a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> numbers don't lie; the people will, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. You can only fluff around the subject if you're losing money every right. quarter. Um, yeah. yeah. And so it, it's pretty humbling that way, and pretty transparent. Because I wish anyone in business could lay down financials and say, "Okay, what do you look at? What?" What works for you? What's working? What's changed the numbers? Right. Um, I don't think of any areas of business I've ever seen that. Um, and that's one takeaway that I can. Yeah. Yeah. Usually companies, and, and, and you started that too when I started. You, I mean, you were, you're like, this is open book. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the way I run my companies. Right. Yeah. So that, which was really unusual for me because okay. usually, you know, it was financials were top secret stuff, you right. know, from other places I've been. And you just didn't talk about that stuff. But, when you're able to feel, you know, reasonably free about, about, yeah, this was, uh, we're not doing well here. And, you know, how do you look at that? Or we're doing, or we are doing well, right? right. So um, I, I think it's a, it gets buy-in from, from both, you know, employees and, and um, you know, the upper level management for sure, you know, yeah. about, they, they know what's going on. So. Well, I get, so many people that ask me like, what's, what's the best, like I converted my company to an open book company. That just means we go through the financials together as a team. I'm transparent. Um, a platform called EOS, we go down all the way to the labor. They know our numbers, whether they care or not, Right. you know, different levels care, but it's an open book company. I felt like a lot of people just ask me nowadays though. It's like, how do you incentivize employees alignment of interests? How do, if Mark wins, how does Mike win? How does right. the laborer win? How does yeah. everyone win? Like, 
I don't think there's a better way to do it than have an open book and then tie it to the financials of the company. Yep. Like, you know, I have no secrets. I, uh, if I'm going to have people that I trust working for me, then I'm going to share my finan- financials with them. I'm going to be an open book. I, yep. I know they're bought in to the bottom revenue number. Yep. Um, that means, that means everyone has to be aligned perfectly yeah. to do that to achieve it yeah yeah it, it, you know I, it, we're still working on that right but when i it, the, the dream is the guy you know cleaning the trailer out is knows exactly what he's got to do and um for the hitting the job hours or you know whatever it is to to make a difference to, to make a difference right you know that's that's the ultimate goal on that so yeah yeah. Well, it's good that's eye opening. Um, and I, I don't know if that was, was that right away when you worked for me? Like we pretty much opened you did. it up. Yeah. It was, you just, yeah, here it is, you know? And so it was, it was really a change for me to, yeah, to have that, uh, um, have that look right away. Into yeah. Your, your <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, I think you gotta have a level of trust with your employees. If they can't figure out in their own mind how they can make a change, how to make a bottom line revenue change. I, I, I think it's just, People ask, uh, how many times have we talked about a bonus incentivized program? Yeah, right. How many? How many times? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the kind of the elephant in the room all the time about how to make that fair and, and do that. But yeah, um, um, I want I want you to share. We we have talked about this for probably as long as you've been here, Mike. Yeah, uh, eight plus. I, how long have you been with Matt? Uh, no? just. This is my, it'll be my ninth season. Ninth so I season. completed eight years. So, yeah. So we've talked about this every year. It's changed because our company has changed. Yeah. Um, we're an open book company, which means everyone can see net revenue. And yep. we're, we're, we're blasted off in net revenue. Um, but you got to break it down to more simple for the laborers, hours, you know, what, how do yep. they affect the net? Um, you know, talked about some of the challenges as we made our bonus programs. I mean, you've known all the different ways we've tried to do it. Yeah. And then let's talk about what we've kind of settled on. Um, probably the best one we feel to date. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, you know, we're so, excited about it. So. Yeah. So talk about like some of the incentivized, because I get asked this a lot. Like, how do you align interests with right. the laborer to the foreman to the superintendents to yeah. everyone? Yeah. Well, the, you know, the goal is to have the everybody in alignment for like if I the foreman hits his hours and you know, the crew all know what their hours that they got to hit. And the PM knows, uh, you know, they, they're, they're doing their best to keep the costs in within budget. And, um, so I, we've, yeah, we've gone through a, a million different scenarios with, uh, with bonus programs and, you know, a lot of it, most of the time it, it's come down to just a, a gifting thing at, at the end, you know, yeah. which we, which we, we don't like. We right. want to tie it to some KPIs, right. and 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 it's been it's a struggle. No, no matter right. what, I know everybody out there in business struggles with this because it's right. like, what KPIs do I use? How right. do I make it simple enough that it's so simple that Mike understands exactly, or let's say a, a foreman knows exactly what he needs to do to get that bonus. Right. The simpler you can make it, um, yeah. Because sometimes we get too complex, and then we realize. Scrap it. it. It's too complex. It's too hard to figure out. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we've done, I, I don't know how many Excel spreadsheets of, <laughs> you know, trying to get exactly and, and, and be too complicated, yep. you know? And, and so I, I think this new one I, I like a lot and it actually came about from talking to another business, you know, person that, uh, that we work with and, uh, which was cool too, you know, the, the interaction with the other subcontractors, engineers, and, and things like that in, yeah. in, in the area. And that's where this came about. So, you know, the idea that uh, you, you kind of split up, there's a bonus pool, and uh, based on a percentage of, of salary, you know, if it's... So you tie it to salary? Right, yeah. Okay. So it's 15 20% or, you know, whatever it is that you... you, you that percentage, you know, somebody makes $50,000 and 20% of that... Um, they're eligible to get for, through a bonus, so, you know, ten thousand dollars. Yep. And then that from there, that's broken down into the jobs that you worked on, right? Did you the you had direct contact with these jobs? That uh, so fifty percent of that ten grand, ten grand, right? Okay. If you hit your your bonus 
or you hit your, your goals, your, you know, your hours, your profit goals for that job, then, you know, that you're eligible to get that. Okay. And then 25%. That's per- half of it. Yeah, then, so a half. And okay. And then, then the other half, we, we kind of split up into two different categories again, where it's 25% of that, so $2,500 in the example I'm using, Yep. is tied to um, a personal goal that you want to set. Maybe you want to quit smoking. You want to oh, cool. um, buy a house. We're going to leave that open to you know, let that employee decide yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Set, set a, set a goal out there. And, Hold and, them accountable. Yeah. You know, I know you're a big, you know, you like goals. Or, yeah. Um, and then another ca- aspect of that is, you know, attend a training or, um, become part of a, 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 a group in town, a, a construction group or oh, sure. something Continuing along that Ned line. Yeah. Of yeah. Some yeah. Sort? Something. Okay. So, which I always love pushing. Right. I'm constantly pushing. Right, that. right. So the company will support a lot of those as well, too. You know, if you, if you I really want to go to a training and, and learn how to do this, you know, we send guys to World of Concrete. And, okay, um, yeah. So um, that's part of the goal. So 25% of that. So a couple so a of things, a personal and, and a business. Business, right. business, yep. education. Okay, cool. Yep. yep. And then the the last 25% is like overall biz, uh, company. Did the company hit its goals? Got it. You know, so, and if, if the first two happen, it's pretty likely that the company is going to hit its goals as well too. Sure. So, sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me break that down just quickly. Yep. Um, so we got, so I'm a $50,000 employee. We're going to, we're going to dictate a certain percentage, say 20%, like you said, 10,000 yep. bucks. Half of that's going to be tied to a metric that I can make a difference on the job. Right. So like, and that may be different for different people's positions right yep, yeah yep. like foremen or, or even labor guys yep did you eat your hours you know hours because that's it's, that's really what jobs. we're working at it right got yep. it yeah pms might be different um because they're not on a job but they are managing Ching. the job right yep. so did did the overall job come in on budget right okay so and then we got 25 percent that's tied to a personal goal and a business goal and that's right. either you hit it or you didn't Correct. Yep. And it's, it's, a, it's a yes or no. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Um, and then the third leg of this is basically the rest of the 25% would be basically based on the performance of the company. Right. Um, I think we use a metric, and I don't know what you're using, but I know we always talked about 50% of return on overhead. So we, if overhead's a million dollars, um, we would the company would want to net 50, 50% or keep 500000 right. We should net $500,000. Right. And then... And then if we hit that, they'd be eligible for that twenty five percent. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So um, it's a it's a not only uh, you know we have different you know we have a concrete crew as well too, or, but we're all one company. Yep. So you know we want that alignment of the the GC and the and the concrete being aligned, right? Everybody yeah. has the same goal in the end, okay. right? Yeah. So. Got it. Yeah. So anyway, there's your next bonus program. We tied it to their KPI, their what they're responsible to do. We tied the twenty five percent to a business personal goal, and then the remaining twenty five percent is a based on company performance and how much it net revenues. Uh, a certain we use fifty percent of overhead. Right. Um, that's a little George trick. Yep. Yeah. Um, I liked where you were going with the team aspect because I think well, let's we'll go back into Mac a little bit and your role and some of our struggles today and some of the it's the good things that we've solved yeah. that can help a lot of people too. Um, we've talked about teammate and culture, and um, we we spend a lot of money on culture. We're big believers in culture. We want everyone here on the same mission with the same attitude going for the same end dream outcome. So we talk about that a lot. We right. try to get the right people here um, to, to join this mission with us. So we, we divided into departments. So we, we did this as a, we did this as a tool because we have a, a large concrete operation. They do about eight to 9 million a year. Um, and, uh, we have a general contracting division, which they do different types of work. You got an operation with lots of people, and then you got a general contracting, which not a lot of people, but a lot of managers. Um, but kind of share like what happened there, you know, it's, we, 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 I think we thought it was a great outcome. Yeah. Um, and we struggled through it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you, you kind of, when you say division, that's, 
you know, that's how we treated it. But it also was the, the outcome of it as well, too, was division. Division, yes. Yeah. So uh, we want to promote more of the team. Um, yeah. So trying to align that closer because it, it, it does get to be a, um, when you got two different companies or divisions, you know, there's there can be some conflict there. And, uh, you know, this guy isn't doing this or, you know, and, and when we work together, there's always – who's in charge, you know, who, who, you know, sometimes, you know, when things, things are great, you know, it's, it's easy, but yeah. when there's conflict or a problem on the site then who's responsible, you know, so it gets kicked around a little bit. So we just wanted to align that. Yeah. And it, we're a team. Um, we're a general contracting company and we self perform concrete. So there we go. It's, it's not a, it's not divisions anymore. So we, we thought it was good. We thought tracking it separately would be really good. It's just, it just, it just didn't work, and right. and it started separating um, our teams, which we didn't want because we were a tight knit group. Um, we got a lot of people here. We want to make sure everyone's in alignment so yep. um, we can hit our goals because we didn't, we just didn't feel like it was going the right direction, and you had to pivot. That's right. what happens. Yeah, you, um, you make changes. You can so. track it separately. That's fine. Yeah, but. Everyone's bonus dictates on how every job we do, no matter if it's a concrete job to a $10 million general contracting job or right. 20, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're all on the same team here and our bonuses dictate that. So yep. um, I like that. And, and I think that we struggled through that a little bit. We started seeing it happening um, and we pulled them together. Right. Um, so hopefully we can start gluing everything back together and, and uh, yep. creating that threshold. So um you know, uh, what else at Mac Construction? You're, we're, we got lots of uh, things that we struggle through that help help people on the upcome. Um, we've hit different levels, different plateaus. We've had to, you know, of, of late, we've had to hire some some people that were smarter than Mike and I yeah. <laughs> in the worlds that we wanted to go into. Yep. Um, and I think it even comes back to when you first started at a concrete crew. It's like you didn't know, you didn't know concrete. Right. You knew how to manage people well, and I think, you know, that's your superpower. Is you're you're the glue of all the people. You just you have a really good your your power as a, as a manager. You you have really good feeling of different things, and it's like you can push people to do different things. Yeah. So how do you how do you do that? Like what you know as a, as another manager out there in any business, it's like how do you what do you look for? What do you see? What do you yeah um. You know, I've, I guess, try to put yourself in the other person's shoes a little bit, yeah. you know, what they're struggling with and just experience, you know, when, so you, you, you've dealt with a lot of different situations, you've been in a lot of different situations. So you sat on the other end of the, you know, the, where I'm sitting and, and have struggled through some stuff and made mistakes, you know, and I, I think giving people the freedom to make mistakes is, is, is key as well too. Yeah. Yep. You know, don't you know, you, you make a mistake, you learn from it. That that's how you grow. That's how yeah. you, you learn to succeed, right? You make the same mistake more up more and more, you know, you know, then it's a bigger problem, right? Yeah. But uh, you know, just allowing people the the freedom to to make some mistakes and, you know, just say, hey, it's okay. I've been there. You know, if I can relate back to them um, you know, this certain situation. So yeah, I, I mean, I always try to try to. I like happy. You know, people are happy with what they're doing. They feel confident about what they're doing. Um, that there's a, a there's a you, they have some backup as well too. So, right. You know, so sound sounding board. Yeah, sounding you're, boards. Yeah, you're you're. Uh, I I heard uh, I think it was Gary V or somebody like they were talking about. Oh, no, it was Pace Morby, and he has like someone at his company is just called Glue. It's like he's not. He's not really like know it of any of these businesses, but he just keeps every he's really good with people. And he just kind of keeps because you gotta know someone when they're strong. You probably notice patterns and you know when yeah. to pivot. You yeah. know when to make a change. You 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 identify those really well, better than most, I would feel. And hard situations, easy situations, you know how to Yeah. You, I, I mean pivot through those. Yeah, and you, you take the responsibility when, you know, it Something tough happens, it's my fault, right? Yeah. And then the success is put on, 
you know, the team did this. Right. Right. Yeah. And then uh, I think you get respect then from <clears throat> it's earned. I, I mm-hmm. would say you, you, you earn respect. You don't, you don't demand it. Yeah. Um, so when you people see you're willing to put yourself in tough situations for them. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, teach them to do that for their people as well too. Right. So. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you're not, and you're not biased about you're the best at what you do. There might be better people. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's not that you need to be the best person or know exactly what everyone's doing. You just need to know that you have the best people in those positions yeah it's you know some humility in, in, which is fine you know to pretend that you know how to do something i think is is worse you know is it to um you your you know your ego gets in the way of your ability you know and that's uh that's not what you that's not how you're going to get respect so and that's not how you're going to lead people either so being say you, you know better about doing this than i do um, go with it. Yeah. yeah. Let's, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll manage you, but I'm not going to pretend that I know more than, than you about this. Cause I don't, you know, so. Gotcha. Yeah. So anyway, this is, this is the guy on the back end of Mac, literally, you know, basically our president that, that pushes people from position to position. He knows how to adjust, how to adapt. And, and when the culture is moving one way, how to bring it together. So it's not necessarily you have to be the most excellent in all those positions. We have the glory of having a leadership team and key people in the positions. We brought in good hires. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> and, and it's not that you're the expert in every space um, or the best. It's just you know how to lead those positions and how to get them to work with each other because they, they all have their battle. You have no people problems, do you? Everyone <laughs> works perfectly, and yeah. you have yeah. It's it's just all good. I I think the more you you go up, it, the more it does become people problem. You know, it's it's less about what's happening on the site and more about you know how we're interacting with each other and with customers and things like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh it's not all just skill based. It's uh you know if you just hired people based on skills and not attitude and vision and like our long-term goals like on board it's like yeah you don't have a team you just got a bunch of robots out there working right and uh, that's not how we work it's like we want people um, we're willing to promote people that aren't even qualified you know and we maybe even promote them too quickly um, but we take people within and we move them up right like we're a growing company and that's why we get access to new employees yeah. and, and up and coming talent because we're going places. That's like my vision, right? Like yeah. I want to do bigger and better things and give Mike bigger and better talent. Um, and I think we can grow that way. Yeah. I mean, the, the honestly attitude and, and uh, um, you know, our core value too, you know, one of them is tough and resilient. If you got those people and maybe they don't necessarily aren't the, you know, don't have a lot of the, the same experience in a, in a, in a particular position, but they've got the willingness to, to work and do it. I, you know, we can, uh, we can work with that. Yeah. Yeah. So. If you're, you, you have to have capacity to do it and the will to do it. If you right. have both of those, then we will teach you how to, how to become a better person. And I will lift you faster. We'll lift you as faster than you probably even thought. Right. Um, but if you, you know, you know it all and, and we can't help you grow and adapt, then it's challenging for a manager. It is. Yeah. Yeah. You <clears throat> limit, you're limited on what you can do with that person. Right. So, yeah. So that's, that's interesting. So it's, yeah, we got plenty of challenges at Mac. We have plenty of challenge. Every, every company has its challenges, but we're like, we're just talking about how we adapt to these challenges. And hopefully this is helpful for the listener because, um, there's everyday struggles in businesses and, and, you know, Mike's very on top of different situations all the time for us. And, uh, he leads from my vision and, and and pull so we we work together well and yeah i get you into more endeavors than i you know <laughs> probably you want me to get you into you know it, it stretches but it's good so <laughs> it yeah. Stretches. yeah it's um, good yeah so. i uh so I, yeah no it's good um well what what's your story mike well how the hell did you end up here like what like what's your background in how did you get good with people and um, end up making a 25 million dollar company running the background of it I, I i to me i think it just started off with just hard work um who taught you that growing Dad, up, grandpa what yeah i i mean i i 
my grandparents had a, a dairy farm and I, I would work on a dairy farm in the summertime, you know? Um, so I'd be baling hay and shoveling silage and, oh, you awesome. know, and my, my uncle, um, is probably the hardest working man I've, I've ever known, um, where he's, he'd farm all day, you know, and then he'd go farm with the neighbor too, after he was done farming his farm. And, you know, the, with a dairy farm too, it's 3.30 in the morning and 6 at night, the cows had to be milked. It, it, it didn't matter, you know, oh. if the weather was bad or, it, you know, it always had to be done. So I watched that, uh, you know, my, my grandparents, um, my dad, you know, he, he, he worked on that too. And uh, my dad worked several jobs, you know, and we – we didn't have a ton, you know, you know, I I grew up in a, we lived in a trailer house. We, you know, it was fine. You know, we always had food and, but it was, it was always about working though too, you know? So, uh, I, I think that just seeing that. How old were you on the dairy farm? You know, my cousin and I were about the same age. So we, we, we liked it. We loved it too. You know, we go out and drive the tractor when we're eight, nine years old and, thought that was the greatest thing ever, you know, wow. but you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, you know, we'd help bale hay um, yeah. and learned what it meant to work, yeah. you know? So I did the same thing like with horses and cleaning up stalls and yeah. stuff. And, uh, anytime it comes to livestock, yeah. I feel like there is, those guys have to be going 20, like you got to keep these animals alive. Yeah. You got to treat them well. You got, yeah. It's your livelihood. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of, yeah, I'm sure stuff you've learned out of that. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, and, and you know, I didn't work half as hard as my, you know, my grandparents and my, you know, the, my oh, uncle cool. who worked on the thing. But wow. it sure inspired me to. <laughs> you can you got to work hard, you know. Yeah, and, and there's there's satisfaction out of that though too, you know. At the end of the day, so I really enjoyed that. You know, at the end of the day, it was, you know, everybody, you know, the hay got put in the hay mound, so the cows had something to eat, you know, in, uh, during the winter. So it was, uh, it was very satisfying as well too. So yeah, that's awesome. That any job you can get satisfied with is, is yep. you see what you did at the end of the day. And, yeah. and, and the thing with livestock, it's like, no, you wake up tomorrow and it's repeat. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does not <laughs> stop. Yeah. It's like, so it's, uh, you know, and it's like every day of the week, like, you know, like my, it doesn't stop. Right? No. Yeah. I mean, my grandfather for 70 years got up at three 30 in the morning for 70 years jeez you know there was no breaks so unbelievable yeah i uh so what did what did you do you did you go through high school or did you did you yep. skip that no <laughs> i was yeah i went to i went to high school um so detroit lakes is where i grew oh, up oh yeah. yeah so um wanted to be an athlete that was my that was kind of my big um like I, I always wanted to be an athlete i always wanted to be like a the problem was I was really small. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't uh, until actually after I got out of high school that I really started to grow. I was always, I was like the shortest kid. Really? In, yeah, through elementary, junior high, not very coordinated. Okay. Um, you know, I'd try out for the basketball team and i get cut, you know, which was hard. <laughs> Jeez. But, yeah, so, but uh, I just, you know, I, I but I wanted to be an athlete. That was, I, I I looked up to, you know, some of the, the sports guys yeah. and, and stuff like Were that. Were you like Adam Thielen's mentor or anything? Uh, no, but uh, I can appreciate. Uh, I, I didn't. He, Adam was, you know, quite a bit at younger least, than at least me. Three years right, younger, yeah. yeah, but it's a great story. I, I love the story. Yeah, about, yeah. Oh, I thought maybe you were like the guy throwing him balls or yeah, something. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. He was. He came after me. He but, came uh, after. Yeah, okay, you right. paved the way for him. Right, yeah. Well, I, I didn't break into that, but uh, um, I liked com- – competitive I, yeah i am pretty competitive with sports and i like that outlet okay um so um yeah ath- athletics there was some things i was good at you yeah, know yeah. but uh, i was never great you know so but i always uh i i, I wanted to work hard you know i'd, I'd outwork you that was, <laughs> right yeah that, that, that was, was the... that was the one thing i maybe didn't have the talent but i would outwork you whatever we were trying to do that that was one thing i could control oh yeah right yeah and I, I feel like that was me i'm like i'm like okay at a lot of things but yeah. like not the like the best like football player the best bat like i right. just was never the best and, and right. but i was okay at a lot of things i was athletic probably similar to you it's just 
Um, I knew how to work. Yeah, that, so, that was, uh, that was the one ethic. thing it could control. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so what, you, uh, you go to college then, or did you just skip that too? No, I, uh, well, I went, went to, to yeah, the idea was, uh, you know, my, my, my parents, I think, had an idea that they wanted me to be uh, in a professional type of, of work. Uh, so I went to school for accounting. Um, honestly, I identified more with blue collar work. Because okay. that's where I came from. Yeah, livestock to accounting. Yeah, yeah, in, in in construction. That's what intrigues me about the job. No, I love it. I oh. love building stuff. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I went to school for accounting. Um, I uh, I worked at uh, through my high school and college. I worked at McDonald's, which was a another great learning tool for me about wow. that. Uh, I you, you get humility. Um, and you learn how to serve people and you learn how to deal with a lot of different people too, working oh, in fast food, Yeah, you know, and managing people too. So, um, I did that through college. Um, was not a good student. You know, I, I was, I wasn't really focused on, on, uh, school. I was, I, I did enough to get by, but, uh, um, I didn't put in a, a ton of effort until the last couple of years where I was like, I'm going to graduate. I better start paying attention to what I'm doing here. So, yeah. um, so I, I did, I did graduate. So Good for you. I, yeah, I got my degree. So, Woo. and, uh, can't say the same. It was, uh, tough, but, uh, it, uh, I, I, the, the, the things I did learn about accounting are really good when I get into the, the business aspect of, of things too. So I, I, I like numbers too. I, you know, okay. numbers, math in, in, in accounting just came naturally to me. I, I, okay. I understand that stuff. So I, yeah. I really do like that, which is a big part of construction. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So. I, uh, I'm a math guy. I almost fail in everything else. You yeah. know, I'm not a good writer. I'm not a good science guy. I somehow like economics nowadays cause it's tied to numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a similar kind of backstory though, that like, I think like your McDonald's, I was just going to hit that off, like serving people, um, construction's one thing serving people like my wife did a great job with like working at like a local restaurant yep. and being a server through college i think almost every college student should do that so you can serve people and see their issues and and know how to work with people that's like a big skill like it is underrated skill that most people probably don't get yeah and, and should yeah and you um, get paid i mean you get paid okay too yeah i mean you, you can it, you it's looked upon as a, a lesser job, you know? Right. Um, and, and the, the people, but you really, you, you really learn a lot about managing people too. You know, I, 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 I worked for McDonald's for a while after, uh, after college even I, you know, my GPA wasn't that high guy offered me a job to run, be a store manager and then do some accounting for him on this as well oh, okay. too. So um, but it was, that was my offer. You know, that was, that was my option, you know, I, cause I didn't have a lot. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. You know, yeah. I think it was 17 grand a year is what I. 17 grand. You what can he, retire? What he, what he what offered me. Yeah. And it, it was a great company that I work for too. He's a, you know, really, um, a good people, these owners that I work for. So I, I, I really appreciated them. But when you, you learn how to manage people though, that are on the, again, your, your thought of lesser of you know some oh, of these people gotcha. that work but some hard-working people too so it's a lot of humility that you, you gain from um people working with people like that as well too you know yeah so and there's some talented people that 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 will work and they work hard right? right you know they know what a dollar means you know so well and imagine like just from that restaurant experience like not only knowing the serving process but like you had to deal with the manager. There's turnover at McDonald's. Oh, I mean, it's it's a nightmare. So yeah. what? How? What are some of those skills like? How did you? How did you? I don't even. I don't even know where to start on how they keep them places staffed. Yeah, I, it was a constant struggle for me. You know, I was a store manager for a while, and yeah. that, that was the biggest challenge. Like, is yeah, I can offer you four dollars and fifty cents an hour. You know, and no benefits, right? Crappy hours. You get. You know, sometimes you get tough customers and, you know, stuff like that. So that was your sales pitch? Yeah. Low pay. Yeah. Tough right. customers and work right. the shit out of you. Right. So I it, like was, it. it was really about relationships then is you get yeah. employees and you like treat people well and you'd have a good time too at, at work. You had fun. Oh. 
Um, so you really had to emphasize that to keep people, you know, you had to give them the, a better culture, you know, because okay. you weren't paying them enough. You right. Know? But, um, so you really had to be very intentional about how you treated people. Right. So I, I think I learned a lot from that as yeah. well too, in order to retain people. Right. So, yeah, that's, yeah. uh, I would say that skill has brought you where you are today. I mean, just coming out of college, like that's, you can't get any better. Like no right. one would say going to McDonald's was going to be the path. And yeah. you probably didn't say that was the path for you in high school. No, no. I mean, <laughs> that, that wasn't a dream, you know? Yeah. Right. So, um, right. But, but how many skills you learned, um, would you say you learned more in those three years than taking college? Oh yeah, for sure. College was a, a degree, right? Okay. Something you could, you could show people, yeah, I've got an accounting degree, yep. right? But it, it wasn't a life skill, though. It was, it was you know, I, I had to push through. I did. I had to, I had to work at it to finish. But um, it, it wasn't a life skill, though. And it wasn't, uh, I certainly could have um, not had a college degree and, and still, I think, be where I am today. Gotcha. I, I don't think I had to have it. Yeah, gotcha. And then and not that education is not important. Like we no. want our doctors, but like you could have probably learned accounting in one year for what you needed to know right. and, and graduate. I just, I just think like, well, you know, you got daughters in college now I and, yep. and are almost uh, through college one, now. Yeah. It's one, <laughs> one that's graduating with their master's. Yeah. You yeah, know how much so, this stuff costs. Yeah. It's expensive. And, and, and for them, the path was good. I, it, right. it is, you know, and I mean, they're straight A students too. Yeah, so, yeah, you're fortunate. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I was not at that. That was not they probably the case. have some scholarships going on. They, they, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just, you know, they work harder at that than I did. I, I just didn't have the passion for it. I was gotcha. just trying to get C's. Were fine, you know. Yeah. If I get a C, I was, I was happy. So. And there's a lot of me and you guys out there. I mean, I would say we fall in probably the 75 percent of people who go to college. Right. We went there. I went there to just to like procrastinate because I didn't know what else to do. That was just like. That's what you do. That was a path. I don't right. want to pour concrete for the rest of my life. Right. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to figure out what I'm going to be when I grow up. Yeah. It's like, no, at, at, at a, it's not cheap when no. you're not on the smart end of the scale. No, no. Yeah. And, and, and I, I joined the military, so and that was paying for my college. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I didn't, I didn't rack up any bills and I knew I was, that was going to cover it for me, you know, and that was, that was part of the reason why I, I, I joined. So Gotcha. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. We could have saved ourselves a couple dollars and a couple <laughs> beers, I'm sure each. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, but, but the it, path leads you, I mean, right. You know, I, I wouldn't change it either though. So, yeah. yeah. I, I learned a lot of things in college. Maybe I shouldn't be, shouldn't have learned. And, and, uh, I, I just didn't know what else to do. There's no other path out there for everyone to right. take that say, okay, go into the trade school, which is a big thing now. I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully those programs make it bigger because these people, these, we see what people make nowadays in, <laughs> this is like yeah. foreman for a concrete or or even a lead guy. Or yeah. Incredible. Or, or be an electrician. Oh. Be a plumber. Yeah. Um, or I, I, I love the idea of the, the two-year colleges. Um, right. Even for accounting. Right. Nursing, whatever. You know, you go in and that's not, you know, it's not the same, the path for everybody. It's not. But right. But. Don't limit yourself to a four-year college. You yeah. know, look at some of these these trade schools. You can come out, you make more money than you know the lawyer or the doctor. Yeah, because you know they have so much student loan debt. You know, you you come out of school and you're making eighty k. Yeah. So my my wife is the perfect example. Went for like business and marketing or whatever, and and uh, comes out and makes you know a twelve dollar an hour job. Yeah. And it's tough, you know. And, and now she has student loans. She got car payments. She got rent. It's like you yeah. couldn't even you couldn't even make it. And that was you know ten years ago. Right. It's like right. Yeah. I it, it's it's if you're if you're gonna if you're like the trades, you enjoy the trades. You should look at a trade program. Incredible what these we pay these people in construction yeah. industry, and well worth your time to look yeah. at it. And if you want to be a business owner, what better way to do that as well too? Right. I mean, you, you work your way up through it. You're already making money. Mm-hmm. You learn the business part of it. Yeah. But then, you know, you you own your own electrical company or concrete right. company, whatever it is. Yep. I mean, I think it's a, a path that's underutilized and underappreciated. Yeah. So, yeah. People don't want to go to do any physical work anymore, though, is, is kind of like the, yeah. the area. But, man, if you're any love physical work out of the gate and, like, 
you know, you can build a business of this. It's incredible what yeah. some of these trade programs. Yeah. Um, so anything else happened after McDonald's? What, uh, where were, you were, uh, you did the military. You yeah, I was, I, was in, I was in Minnesota National Guard okay. and it really started off with, uh, it was, a, you know, my, we, my parents didn't make enough to pay for my schooling. Um, it was on me, yeah. you know, but we were in that middle group where I, I didn't, my, I didn't have a lot of scholarship opportunity. You know, we kind of middle class, right? We, we, I didn't yep. get scholarships just because of income. Um, but, uh, also my academics weren't great either. So, um, my dad was, a, a worked at that time. He was a, a full-time person who worked for the Minnesota national guard, um, as a full-time person as well too. So wow. he said, you can do this and, uh, we'll pay for your, and your schooling will be paid, you know? Wow. So it was, uh, a six year commitment. Um, but, uh, um, I did it, you know, Six that was, year. yeah, it was, uh, you know, so I ended up doing 11 years is what I did. I, wow. I reenlisted a couple of times, That's but awesome. yeah, I enjoyed my time there. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about leadership oh, in the military yeah. as well too. Um, you know, I, I went to basic training, a, a small guy, uh, you know, it was intimidating, but, uh, um, I completed that. That was a big accomplishment for me. Right. I actually did basic training twice. Oh, just for fun? Yeah, well, it was uh it was kind of strange, but I um it was infantry school in in Fort Benning, Georgia, and uh Okay. um I I had a problem with uh I hadn't shot a rifle a whole lot. And so there's there's different qualifications you have to do, you know, physical and and shooting and, and things like that. And I was I could run, I could do push-ups, I could do all of that stuff, but I was having a heck of a time qualifying with my my weapon could not get through the qualification course and there was about 10 of us that were um having this this problem you know and it was uh um you were isolated be, if, if you didn't qualify Bye. yeah it, it, the military's job is to weed out the people that don't want to be there right and and, and um so I, there was me and 10 other guys that were having a, a difficult time with this in 19 years old away from home probably for the first time for most most of us yeah. you know so um i got to the point where it was like 6 weeks in and uh, i hadn't still hadn't qualified and they're like all right i don't think you're going to be able to do this you know here's how, your how long is the program so basic training i think was about 10 weeks okay yeah. so you're you're over halfway yeah i'm over halfway out the gun. i couldn't freaking do it you know they had me shooting left-handed right-handed and <laughs> And it got in my head too, you know, so, um, and there was a lot of pressure too, that, uh, I wasn't doing this, you know, again, they're trying to weed people out. Yep. And, uh, finally one day there was 10 of us and they said, all right, either going home or you're going back to start again, basic training from day one, what's your option or what do you want to do? And, uh, I, I got to me and I was like, there was a guy that was one of the officers there that had given me a hard time in particular about not being able to, you know, shoot good. He asked me, he thought I was going to say, go home. And I said, send me back. So there was me and three other guys that oh, cool. said, let's go. The motivator. Yeah. It was, was that guy. Who, he pissed who, me off. Yeah. He was right. like, I'm not going home with my tail in between my legs. Yeah. So, um, started over again Yeah. at, uh, at day one. So I ended up doing 14 weeks. You're of, like, oh uh, shit, day one. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's intense, right? <laughs> Is it? But uh, ended up with a, a group that uh, of the drill sergeants are in, intimidating, you know, but uh, there was one there in particular that took me aside and said, I, I respect that you didn't choose that going home. I'm going to get you through this. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I had cool. that confidence. So me and these three other guys, um, and we ended up, yeah, All I started awesome. shooting good. So it was just that confidence that he instilled in me, um, which I, I still remember too, that this, this guy took the time to, you know, just say, Hey, it's going to be okay. Yeah. You know? And, uh, put you under his wing. Yeah. It's something I learned about, you know, not giving up. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Push through. So, yeah. That's uh you can almost relate that to business too. It's like, you yeah. gotta, you gotta have a motivator because you're stepping into the cliff of unknown. Yeah. You don't know. Well, you probably didn't know at that minute 
he probably didn't tell you, I'm going to help you out through this, Mike. He right. wasn't warming you up. He was trying to get you to say, I quit. Right. And move on. That's their job. Yeah. Like you said. Yeah. It's it's their job and perseverance, you know? And, yeah. And so that, that was a big lesson for me about that because to tell you the truth, I wanted to go home. I was tired of it. You know? <laughs> right. But uh, um, it was like, no, I'm not going to let you beat me. Right. You know? So. Yeah. So you turned it into pure motivation yeah. and, and we were like, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna freaking prove you wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna prove you wrong. And Competitive, it, and I was a I was a leader too for uh, that. You know, I I ended up being squad leader and and stuff like that. And you know, it, it was very gratifying when they yeah. when I graduated from that. Yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah, that's uh, humbling when you can freaking persevere through something and then succeed, right? Like yeah. Um, but of course, you know, no one sees that you're just the overnight success that just made it through it (laughs) (laughs) when you talk about it now. Yeah. It's your failures that, uh, I really define you. I think it is right. Get back up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's a, that's an awesome story though. It's like how that, that shaped you too. So you were 19. Is that like right before the McDonald's thing? I was still working for them at the time. I was just, you left. Yeah. I was just left. So I I spent the summer in in Georgia. Wow. So yeah, that's really cool. That's real. That's that's honestly a really cool story. So that's uh, um, so you would tell everyone to enlist and do that same thing if they can't make it through college yeah. or can't well, pay for college. It's an college. option. It's yeah. an option. Yeah, it is. It's an option, and I, you know, I, 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 I'd never, you know, we were talking about this the other day. I've never shot at anybody, and I've never had anybody shoot at me. So there's a there's a different level of a of a military service to me. Um, you know those those. I, I have a high respect for people that, uh, you know, were in the, the mix of that stuff. But, um, but, uh, I, I still have a lot of, I, I learned a lot and I learned a lot about sacrifice and, you know, you're, you're willing to sacrifice for other people, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and that was, I took that seriously, you know, that, you know, when called upon, I, I would, you know, yeah. so. No, that's it. That's a, that's a great leadership story. And like, just shows you like you know you that every everything your experiences are who you are today and and we're doing big things in construction now today yep. and we're just uh there's plenty of days we could say we're gonna quit <laughs> yeah there's, there, there's lots of humbling days there is yeah um in this business and it's not easy um there's more regulation um there the the people pool of qualified people is less than yeah. it's ever been. Yeah. Um, you got challenges of that. You got margin squeezes from everything from materials going up to labor's going up to can't even find labor to do a job. We're up in North Dakota, so it's um, more rural, not as many people around here. So yeah. we have mm-hmm. our own challenges. And, um, you know, we, we would have quit probably a long time, Mike or I, <laughs> and maybe us both at the same time. Yeah. Um, Lots of times, actually, you well, know, there was plenty of challenges we've faced. Yeah, I, and I, I see, you know, a lot of people don't see with with Mark and, and Chelsea as well too. That, I mean, I'm sure there's been times where you're like, this is not worth it. You know, yeah, I can't. How much I can take of this, but, um, so yeah, I, I know full well that you deal with that a lot and yeah. have dealt with that a lot. So yeah, you, yeah, you. I, I just don't use the word quit. I just try to find my new motivation, kind of like you in the military. It's like yeah. I. I Who's going to deny me next? Like, right. I will prove you wrong. I will outwork you. That's because that's what I know how to do. Like, right. that's what I'm good at. Yeah, you fall upon those basic things, right? Yeah. You, you maybe don't have all the the knowledge, but again, you fall back to, I'm just going to outwork you. Yeah. So. I don't, yeah, I don't know everything. I don't even claim to know everything. I just try to, now I want to help people persevere through through not saying I quit after three years or five years. Yeah. You know, there's different levels. You it, challenges just get bigger. The problems get larger. You got to be able to solve them quickly, adapt and, and, and just persevere. Yep. Yep. Be, so. Make a decision and, you know, from the best information you have Yep. and be willing to take that chance. You may be wrong, right? But you're still going to make that decision though. Yeah. So. If you, I always, I, I, I was talking about Will about that earlier. It was like, if I, I, it took me a while to make decisions before, like I would, methodically think about it and it, it would just create stress in me like i, I yep. like just make a decision and then the, the, my stress ended up turning into like anxiety and then yeah. anxiety ended up giving me night sweats and like i just like it just like just 
whatever it is, make the decision, fail, learn, and live on. Yep. Like that's yep. just just do it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I that's I don't like. I can only think about something for so long, and it's like I'm tired of thinking about it. I'm tired of being scared about it. I'm yeah. just gonna do it. Just do it. Yeah. Right? And yeah. Uh, I would tell that anybody in any situation, just make go with your gut, make a decision. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. Mike knows I'm a believer in that. Yeah, I agree with that too. And yeah. uh, and uh, everything will everything will be fine. So I got a couple questions for you, Mike, and we'll we'll All wrap right. this up. Sounds good. And uh, you don't know what these are. Oh, okay. So, um. You know, envision yourself, uh, clear your mind, oh. and you don't have to relate this to work. You don't have to relate this to anything. Um, you can if you want. Um, but if you were closing your eyes and in, in five years, Mike, what do you envision yourself? Where do, where do you see yourself? Where do you, what's, what's the greater Mike in five years? What do you, what do you see? Um, boy, um, I love what I do now. I, I, I think I'd, I'd love to um, continue and, and maybe mentor people even more, mm-hmm. uh, mentor leaders. I, you know, I don't know. I've, I've tossed this around for retirement. You know, I'm, not, I'm a little ways away yet, but what do I want to do? I, you know, I, I'd love to be a, a part of, you know, Mac still, but maybe I'm the more of a behind the scenes support person and, able to mentor people. I've seen other people do that, um, in other professions or that, uh, I don't know, make a difference. I, I, I just want to make a difference for, yeah. for people. So is that helping other people or like, what do you envision out even outside of Mac and, and some of those things like, you know, are, you got any dreams coming up? Um, my, well, my wife and I, we do, we, we love the Duluth area. So, you know, eventually we'd like to build up there. We've got a lot up there. So, that's a, a dream of ours yeah. um, that we want to do. But uh, we also, I, I don't think either one of us want to retire, or like quit working. I, I, we just want to affect people's lives in a, a positive way. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're active in church. Um, I'm a big believer um, in uh, um, redemption for, you know, I've had my own issues and struggles. So I love to see um, and help if I can be mm-hmm. a part of somebody uh, um, coming back from a, a difficult situation cool. and uh, um, grace and forgiveness and uh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing more satisfying than that either. Uh, helping somebody come through a situation or, you know, I'm helping even smaller contractors persevere. Right. It's like, it's just, it's really satisfying in life. You know, it, you can make an impact. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, one last question. All right, let's have it. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, what does unfollow the herd mean to you? I think uh, unfollow the herd is um, the anti, you know, the status quo. It does not, you don't have to do it the same way that everybody else does it. Um, I, I've learned, that is one of the biggest things I have learned from you, um, is that you you don't have to, um, just because you did it this way for 50 years and you think this way, you don't, you don't have to do that. Um, you don't have to, you know, and that's part of our culture as well too. Mm-hmm. So, um, giving people the, the, the freedom to make mistakes again and, and, uh, um, go against the grain, you know, yeah. and, and it, it ruffles feathers. I know it. And I know it, it does. You know, you, you cause disruption, right? You know, <laughs> disruption is something we talk about, yeah. but um, it's uh, I, being a disruptor in a positive way is a powerful thing, mm-hmm. I think. So you can pull some people along with you too. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, Mike. Love you, man. All right, man. Thanks. Okay. See you guys in the next one.